welcome to Green TV, the show dedicated to positive Green New Deal solutions and the candidates that advocate for them. I'm Gail Farrell Parker. And I'm Angela Trustee, your co-host today. Green TV is about Green New Deal eco-jobs for the economy, new jobs, positive solutions, eco-capitalism. Prices must tell the environmental truth. We also are talking about positive jobs like wind jobs, solar jobs, geothermal jobs, rail jobs, weatherization jobs, conservation jobs, and efficiency jobs. Green TV is about building green neighborhoods, walkable, bikeable, pedestrian, and rail-friendly communities, having cleaner air and cleaner water, cutting fossil fuels subsidies to zero, for big oil, big auto, and big asphalt. Rail built anywhere in America benefits all of America. Green TV is about renewable energy, free energy, clean energy. On today's show, we're focusing on news for rail passengers. Rail can move people, the economy, and the nation forward. But first, this short, this short message from one independent civic activist in Arlington, Virginia. I'm Audrey Clement, the independent candidate for Arlington County Board. As a 13-year Westover resident and civic activist with a PhD in political science and service as a congressional fellow, I'm running for county board because Arlington faces several crises the county board has failed to address. Among them, overcrowded schools, loss of green space, and an office vacancy rate double the historic average. If elected, I pledge to emphasize basic services like streets, schools, libraries, and public safety, seek tax relief for residences and businesses, and stop the exodus of federal agencies from Arlington. Promote consolidation of housing programs to improve efficiency. Promote installation of efficient renewable energy in all public schools and provide a voice on county board for all taxpayers. If you share my agenda, then spread the word about my candidacy. Donate to my campaign. Together, we can make the Arlington Way more than an empty phrase. I'm Audrey Clement, and I authorized and paid for this message. Ron Fisher is asking all candidates for public office to make implementing the UN Sustainability Development Goals target action plans part of their platform on both the state and local levels. Ron Fisher is a retired U.S. Navy captain and former nuclear submariner and engineer, a pacifist who advocates for the elimination of all nuclear weapons. Ron Fisher is a father, a husband, a grandfather, and the executive director of PeopleNow.org, an independent green candidate for delegate to Virginia's General Assembly from the 49th District. Ron Fisher supports renewable energy and more trains, less traffic. Vote for more trains, less traffic on November 7th. Vote for Ron Fisher. I'm Ron Fisher, and I authorized and paid for this message. For you train vacationers, train service on the eastbound Sunset Limited and Texas Eagle Train has scheduled return to normal operations from Los Angeles to San Antonio by the 5th of April. The disruption allowed Union Pacific Railroads to perform track work. In most areas, as in Virginia, passenger trains use freight train tracks. Long sought and highly anticipated new Amtrak track and boarding platforms are under construction. In Roanoke, Virginia, construction is estimated to can be completed in 10 months. High speed rail with speeds up to 250 miles per hour is being considered uh, to connect Seattle and Vancouver, British Columbia. The feasibility report is due to their governor December the 15th, 2017. Neighboring California compared the cost of conventional transportation infrastructure and discovered they could build high-speed rail for half the cost and have cleaner air and cleaner water. To reduce congestion and connect various rural and urban areas, the Colorado Legislature is considering a positive solution bill for a passenger rail line from southern Colorado to Fort Collins. 
The bill would also expand the commission designed to preserve the existing Amtrak Southwest Chief Rail Line. And now, this on solar panels. This episode has been brought to you by our super generous supporters on Patreon. Of all the renewable energy sources we have to choose from, solar power has by far the most potential to supply all of our energy needs for the foreseeable future. That's because it's practically infinite. It comes from, oh, I don't know, the sun, the giant fireball in the sky. And even though we've had the ability to harvest the power of the sun for over a century now, it hasn't become efficient and cheap enough to compete with the fossil fuel industry until very recently. Now we're in the midst of a solar power revolution that promises to change the world the same way that computers have. Good Stuff producer Matt Weber tells the story of how solar power went from a pipe dream to the greatest power source ever, probably. For the first time ever, the declining cost of solar power is putting it in direct competition with fossil fuels. In some parts of the world, solar power is even cheaper than oil, and it's expected to keep dropping. But the technology behind this energy revolution isn't new at all. In fact, the first solar cell was created in 1883, only a year after the first coal-fired power plant was built by Thomas Edison. Just a few decades earlier, it had been observed that an electrical current could be generated in some materials when exposed to sunlight. This was the photovoltaic effect. If someone could harness this, electricity could be generated with no fuel whatsoever, wherever the sun was shining. But this early solar cell only converted about 1% of the sunlight falling on it into electricity, making it no match for Edison's coal plants. For the rest of the 19th century and much of the 20th, the dream of solar power would remain just that, and fossil fuels would dominate our energy landscape. It wouldn't be until the 1950s when solar cells would become efficient enough to be a reliable power source. Through their work developing the silicon transistor, which would lead to the electronics revolution, Bell Labs developed the first practical solar cell in 1954. NASA became one of the earliest consumers of these new and improved solar cells, and solar panels soon became commonplace on satellites and spacecraft. But the solar power boom we're seeing today didn't really take off until the oil crisis of the late 70s. The scarcity of fossil fuels and rising gas prices at the time motivated a whole new generation of entrepreneurs to envision a world where solar power could wean us off oil dependence. Richard Swanson was one of these entrepreneurs. After researching solar cell technology at Stanford, Richard Swanson founded his solar power company Sun Power Corporation in 1985. But he's most well known for the law that bears his name, Swanson's Law. Swanson's Law states that solar panel prices will decline by 20% every time the capacity of the solar industry doubles, which basically means the more solar panels we make, the cheaper they get. And that is exactly what is happening now. In 1977, the price of a solar panel per watt was about $76. Today, in the US, it hovers around 50 cents. Commercial costs, including all the setup and installation, is just below $2, and it's expected to be under $1 by 2020. By comparison, the construction costs of a coal power plant, generally the least expensive power source, are a little over $2 per watt. And much of this price decrease has happened only in the last decade or so. And it hasn't just decreased, it has plummeted. Much like Moore's Law, which projected the exponential growth of computer processing power, Swanson's Law projects the exponential growth of solar cells. And the same exponential growth that put a computer in most of our pockets is giving us cheap, practically infinite energy. The price of solar power has dropped so precipitously and the growth of manufacturing has risen so fast, the International Energy Agency has had to consistently revise its estimates to keep up with the growth. All this growth means that solar power is reaching grid parity all around the world. Grid parity is the point at which the cost of an energy source becomes equal to or less than the localized cost of electricity. This figure varies from location to location because the cost of electricity varies. Grid parity is an important benchmark because it's a point where solar power becomes a financially feasible alternative to fossil fuels. Generally, if you live in a sunny place like Southern California, solar power is now just as cheap as fossil fuels. And if we want to slow climate change, we have to start burning less fossil fuels. In 2011, Germany became one of the first countries in the world to reach grid parity with solar power. This is pretty astounding because Germany isn't known for its sunny weather. Heavy investment in solar power led to grid parity there, but countries all over the world are reaching grid parity without any government subsidies. Right now, 20 U.S. states are currently at grid parity for solar power. 22 more expected to reach that goal by 2020. That's 42 states out of 50 that could start relying on solar power just as much as fossil fuel. Even the state that I live in, Illinois, is expected to reach grid parity soon. And I can tell you from experience that Illinois is not known for its sunny weather. Just take a look at it outside right now. It's a pretty typical day.
At this rate, solar power is expected to be the world's number one power source by 2050. There are some obvious drawbacks. For one, although the power supply is free and limitless, it is not always available. It could be cloudy or it could be night, but large capacity batteries could store electricity for use during the dark times, and we could always burn a little fossil fuel to fill in the gaps. Even with an intermittent electricity supply, widespread solar would help ease the use of fossil fuel by significant amounts. Solar power requires no fuel, except for photons, which are virtually infinite, it is carbon neutral. Even carbon emitted in the manufacture of solar panels is offset by the carbon saved through the use of solar power over fossil fuels. And most solar photovoltaic systems have an estimated lifespan of 30 years or more. Solar not only changes where our energy comes from, but it has the potential to change how our energy is distributed. No longer will electricity have to be generated at massive central power stations, as Thomas Edison envisioned. Solar panels can be set up right where the electricity is needed, on the roof of your home or in the pavement of your roads. In Individuals could own their own solar panels and generate electricity for themselves or even sell excess energy back to the grid. Just as computers decentralized communication and information, solar power could decentralize power generation. This could be especially useful in disaster areas or regions of the world with deteriorating power grids or no grid at all, where people might have no other way of obtaining reliable electricity. It doesn't require access to a mine or an oil field. After all, the sun shines everywhere, regardless of national boundaries and geography. Solar power Power could not only empower the citizens of developed countries to take charge of their own energy generation, it could allow the millions of people on this planet who have never had electricity to finally have a cost-effective way of obtaining it. It's hard to overstate the wide-ranging effects the solar power revolution could have. After all, we're talking about the sun here. Even nuclear energy doesn't hold the same potential energy reserves as our sun. And the pursuit of nuclear fusion seems kind of redundant when you realize we already have a working fusion reactor right up in the sky, providing us with more energy than we will ever need. While our energy future will always be powered by a variety of energy sources, and we'll never be able to totally eliminate fossil fuels, not in the short term anyway, solar power is the only energy option at our disposal that promises to give us clean energy from an unlimited source. This technological revolution is already underway. And it's been underway for over a hundred years now. But for decades, solar power was stymied by high cost and poor efficiency. Both those barriers are gone now. There is no reason to think that solar power couldn't be as ubiquitous and as widely available as the sunlight that powers it. Whether it lives up to this potential depends solely on us. The sun has been here for billions of years and it will continue to be here for billions of years after we're long gone. Our time on this planet is a finite resource, but the choices we make now will determine whether or not it is renewable. So what do you think? Are you gonna start buying some solar cells and generating your own power? Or maybe you're just gonna put a coal furnace in your house? I would love to buy solar powers. I live in a condo high rise. That's what I was thinking as I watched this. I said, well, how can I get this in my condo? Right. <laughs> You're watching Green TV, the show dedicated to Green New Deal positive solutions and the candidates that advocate for them. Uh, we want to thank the National Association of Railroad Passengers, uh, NARP News, for today's news on rail. You can find out more about NARP at NARPRAIL, that's N-A-R-P-R-A-I-L dot org. Rail can use clean, renewable energy electrical power. Unfortunately, Virginia lawmakers require electric locomotives to stop in Washington, D.C. and switch to fossil fuel locomotives to transit the Commonwealth. That is why independent Greens are recruiting more trains, less traffic candidates for the General Assembly. And today we have in the studio with us Captain Ron Fisher, independent Green candidate for delegate for Virginia's 49th uh, District. Welcome Captain Fisher. It's a pleasure to see you again. Well, thank you very much. I enjoyed that on the photovoltaic cells. I thought the, the only thing that was wrong is they said 2050. I think we can do it by mm. 2020. Oh, honest to God, I think I've do, we've got the way to do it right here. All right, all right. <laughs> and uh, uh, Captain Fisher has been a frequent uh, guest on Green TV. Uh, Captain Fisher is a retired uh, Navy captain, a submariner, and an engineer. So you know what you're talking about. Right. 
So uh, tell us that uh, you're, uh, in addition to being a candidate, you're also the executive director of PeopleNow.org. Right. Uh, so tell us about PeopleNow.org. Okay. Well, PeopleNow.org is, uh, I have a nonprofit, Defense Fire Protection Association. You can find it on DFPA. I've had a very good work in, in eliminating fires. But uh, it's a nonprofit and mainly focusing on implementing the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals. And uh, we'll talk about those in detail. But, uh, uh, and I've, I've worked on this for years. I, had a, I, I think with technology we have today in the world, and you can see that in that last clip she ran, mm -hmm. that we, it was senseless for us to have any poverty, it's senseless for us to have any, wars are against the law, it's senseless to do that. And there's, there is plenty of money, and we've got plenty of people. You just got to get them, get them working, the ones that want to work, and we can do all these things easily. So, so the objective of these uh, United Nations goals is to eliminate poverty and to eliminate wars? Wars. It covers everything. As you'll see, we have a slide that shows, uh, it we'll, we'll go over in a second, but it's basically 17 sustainability development goals that the nations actually prepared, went together and did it, and the United Nations issued them, and there's 169 targets. They literally cover everything, everything. So uh, wars, poverty, hunger, eliminated, and it's, uh, the nations are slow, they're, they're underfunded, and we, I'll show you where we can get the money, and they're also, uh, there just isn't the political will to do many of these things. I hear a lot of talk about it, a lot of talk, and some of the current administration officials and all, but it's really action. But there's no excuse not to have health, it's, has, Health care is a plan, and so basically uh, people now have developed 44 target action plans. We'll talk a little bit more about those, but basically they cover all the immediate actions needed. For example, on the photovoltaic cells, we say, I say put everybody in the world to work, uh, and not necessarily put those people who put the cells up, but working on a job they want to work on, but getting photovoltaic cells installed. One of our biggest problems is we have the people, but they're mainly working, they're small alliances, but mostly they're working individually. The idea would be is to get people working on, uh, we're all working together. Anybody interested in photovoltaic cells would be on a, a working group, and this plan that I have here is, is, is designed for the local areas and for the 49th district and for the United States. What we will do is replicate that plan and all cities would use the same plan. Now, if, of course, there will be differences so they wouldn't, so as people find better ways of doing it, it would be fed back into it. Now, this would have been hard to do years ago, but with our technology and our information technology system, relational databases, Watson that IBM has, this could be done. We could feed all that back into it. One of the okay. things, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, one of the things I was thinking about is uh, listening to your commercial, you talked about this idea of I'm calling upon candidates everywhere to make this a big well, part of their platform. Talk about, talk about what brought you to that decision to say, hey, this is not just me. I want no matter what you're talking about, this should be part of what you're talking right. about. Right. Well, I've helped candidates for office, and we've all heard these promises. They're going to do something when they get in there. They're mm -hmm. going to have jobs for people. They're going to have health care. And when they get in there, it just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is we have this, quote, plan here. We've got all this expertise these guys just talked about there, is they should start working on it right away. Now I'm, I'm saying not just your issues, but what are you going to work on? Now the the. The SDGs cover everything. And so these they, SDGs, these are the sustainability That development. goes, and the, and the targets will co cover everything. So, but if somebody says what they should do is if they're working on something, is join in with that group. I don't, 
we're not going to manage it. People now aren't going to manage us for anybody, but we really do need to coordinate it. I worked in shipyards overhauling a nuclear submarines, refueling them. Some of these we had to do out in the middle of the river, in the middle of the hurricane season. So we had very tough work. And the only way it could work is we used a common set of plans. If you had a different set of plans for the ship, for the riggers, mm -hmm. the electricians, the pipe fitters, it would never get anywhere. So we had a standard set of plans, and that's my idea here on putting that together. Mm -hmm. On my website, peoplenow.org. Right. And I'm very open to suggestions. Every day people come up with new ideas. I learned a tremendous amount from that clip there. Those people are really talented. Mm -hmm. And they say 2050. How we can beat the 2050? We have probably 7 million people working in the military industrial complex on wars. Wars are illegal, and in 1928, we passed an international law, the Kellogg-Brien. It's good law. We used it to punish the Japanese and Germans. This, wars have been illegal since 29, 1929. We, we, we approved that 85 to 1 vote in the Senate. We have to prove treaties or, or pacts or whatever. That was approved, 85 to 1. It says solve all conflicts by pacific means. Sanctions are not pacific. We're stealing people's money and we put a sanction. Bombing people is off, obviously not specific. Mm -hmm. And we've got some real experts in this. David Swanson's written a book about this. Mm -hmm. We haven't gotten very far because it's just too thing. But I have, there's plans for all that. And I, I, you can read about them on the website. Okay. Well, get your so, questions. Uh, PeopleNow.org. Uh, tackles this solutions by coordinating of a lot of different groups to work on these action plans. Yes, right. And, and the problems simultaneously in, uh, in uh, economics, in uh, social areas, and uh, all of the well, everything, everything political is covered areas. with a plan. And, and they uh, target those with, right. with, so you're developing the plans? With the work to be done on climate change, since a lot of people don't have jobs. So I wrote a, a, a bunch of plans. I have about three dozen plans. Because I was in the Navy, I was ops officer on a destroyer, and I worked in, on submarines. You had to plan ahead. We had to be ready to go to sea, be at sea 120 days. My first job was supply and commissary in A Division. Had to have enough food on board for 120 people mm -hmm. for 120 days. One time I ran out of mustard and we had a hot dog. <laughs> that was <laughs> <more> planning. <laughs> after, after about 60 days, we had hot dogs on the menu. <laughs> hey, nobody ever let me forget that. Yeah, they said you. I could I could tell you a story about just about everything. I'm 81 <laughs> years old. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, uh, the idea is to get people working on what they want to work on. Yeah. And, uh, and collaboration, it sounds like. Collaborate. Too, you, know. you got to collaborate. Yes, That's right. And this is what the SDGs will do. And not only collaboration between organizations, it has to be between the government. The government writes the laws. Um, give us two things that people can do to get started. So you've got peoplenow.org. Um, what's something else that people well, can do to get started? Well, again, it's what they were, you could almost start on anything you're really interested in. So you've got people. But I would say the things that are coming up right now, my number one priority is getting the nuclear weapons off of alert. Okay. We need to file injunctions. If you look at Target Action Plan 18 is to get, that's the number one priority, uh, is get the nuclear weapons off alert. A couple of things, the health care. This is a perfect opportunity to get health care for all. Forget this Medicare for all. Medicare has co-payments and all this. Pay doctors by the hour. And the idea is to read, you could read the health care plan we've got here. I forget the number, it's easy to find, and work on health care. The other one is taxes. The ta they're working on a tax plan. Now, I say it is senseless to have pay charge a poor person sales tax and then turn around and give him food stamps. Why don't you just cut the sales tax so he can go to the store and afford to buy some bread and groceries? And, uh, 
and it's stupid to have this minimum wage. We pay seven dollars and a quarter. The congressmen get $176,000 a year in senators. That's 24 times the minimum wage. They don't need 24 times the minimum wage. We need to raise that, to make it a living wage. A net asset property tax is part of the plan. I think it's number 30, TAP 30, Target Action Plan. And then I don't have all the answers. I'm open to suggestions. Eric Fromm has a prescription for a sane society. And one of the things he says is change, you must do it simultaneously in all the spheres, economic jobs. For example, if we shut down the wars, seven million people would be out of work unless we had it planned for them to work. work. So their, the plan is to get them working on photovoltaic cells and installing it. Uh, so anyone can read all of those slides on peoplenow.org. You can read every one of them. You can read the plan. It's linked where you just click on it, and you, it's a common agenda, I call it. The place to look is the plan. Now, uh, they can also contact you to well, find out what they can do. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And we run have, for office. Yes, and you can contact us. Uh, every plan has a note on there. Please, you can submit it. Now, you can actually you can go online and you can find a place where it says, uh, I wish I had four hours to talk here, but <laughs> we have what I call the gl Global Matrix Network. And when you sign up for that, you can actually, you don't have to sign up for it, you can just put comments in there and it goes right into our computer. The zip code, the idea is a nine digit zip code, if a guy needs a job, he writes down what he likes to do into this system. And then the people that have jobs, will be with nine digits of code. So the computer will tell the guy. So I visualize this plan would be replicated for all the countries in the world and improved on, if they, if they find something better, they would feed it back into it. We can do all of that. So uh, uh, I re we won't have time to go over all the slides. I recommend everybody, please go to peoplenow.org. Okay, well that's uh, that's good. The, the Ron Fisher, Captain, uh, Ron Fisher, U.S. Navy retired. Yes. Thank you so very much for being on our show yeah, today. Well, you're very well. Thank, thank you, guys. It's sure. really fantastic. Uh, uh, renewable energy is clean energy. It's free energy. A rail is safer and can run on renewable energy. We need more trains and less traffic. Rail built anywhere in America benefits all of America. And that's it for today's Green TV. I'm Gail Farrell Parker here with uh, our co-host, Angela Trusty. Mm -hmm. Please join us again next time for Green TV.